Hey guys, it's Toby back with another Art Master Live paint along video. Today we're going to be painting an Napoleonic Austrian Fusilier. This is a front rank figure. It's going to be painted as a German Fusilier from the 24th Regiment. It's going to have dark blue facings. Alright, so to get started, I'm going to take Vallejo Flesh Base. This is a lovely Panzer Aces flesh colour. Hi Paul, thanks for joining us. Hope you enjoy the stream. Alright, so got a little bit of this in my palette. I'm going to water it down slightly. Just adding a bit of water to it. Hi Arta, thanks for joining us. So we've got a bit of a different setup this time using a an app allowing us to control the focus a bit better. So we see how that goes. Camera I think is in a slightly better position than last time as well. Um sort of painting around the tripod. So it will take a little bit of getting used to there. Okay, before I carry on, I'm just going to tidy up that bit of flesh that I got on the visor at the um, the peak of the shako there. Using a lovely bit of a scale 75 black, a really nice black, very very matte. Let me know what you think of the video quality, sound quality, etc. Okay, 
Okay, so I'm going to go straight on to undercoating the cloth now. That's the, the largest colour that we've got to work with today. So I'm going to use Vallejo Light Mud. It's going to be a nice warm white that we're going to use today. So when I'm um, putting this on, I'm actually going to go sort of right up against the straps because um, I don't actually want to have any black showing in between the, the strap and the jacket. So we're going to let it bleed over slightly. The reason we're doing that is because this is uh, a white uniform and where the straps are white um, if you leave black showing although it, you know it can look nice sort of to uh, to define the straps that way um, but you will really notice the, the contrast of the black undercoat with the the white cloth is going to be very extreme and it might look a bit untidy so we're going to try and avoid that by just going right up to the strap um, you might find it easier to use a white or a grey undercoat especially with a figure with a uniform this bright I might just adjust the camera slightly. That's a bit better. Yeah. Hey, what's up? Thanks for joining us.
Okay, I think that'll do for the the white there. Okay, next on the list, uh, we're gonna. What are we gonna undercoat? We'll undercoat the backpack. So for this, I'm gonna use Vallejo uh, leather belt, another Pan's Races color, and that's gonna have a nice wash and a highlight. Hope everyone's had a good day. Hope you got lots of painting done. Again, not being too precious about going over the straps on the back. Yeah, we're hoping to make uh, live streams a bit more of a regular thing. At least every week would be good. Let me know if there's anything in particular you'd be interested in seeing me paint. That'd be cool. Alright, so next, uh, undercoat the wood. Probably wooden hair will do in this colour. We're going to use Vallejo Flat Brown. Actually not sure if there's any hair showing on this miniature, it's sort of covered up. Yeah. Thanks for checking us out. Hope to catch you later. Alright, so the little scabbard at the back, we're going to paint that in uh, another Pan's Races, this is Vallejo Dark Rust, lovely dark brown.
Hi Bob, thanks for joining us again. Good to see you. We've only just started, you've not missed anything. So we used uh, Vallejo Flesh Base for the flesh. And we used Vallejo Light Mud for the cloth. Vallejo Leather Belt for the backpack. Uh, flat brown for the wood and dark rust for the scabbard that's where we are so far so next um, the uh, blanket roll on the back we're just going to go with dark grey for that What's the weather like in Canada, Bob? Hope it's not too cold for you. Okay, now I'm going to undercoat the collar cuffs uh, turn backs. This unit is the 24th and it's going to have um, dark blue facings. So we're going to use scale 75, scale color deep blue. Yes, yeah, a lovely, simple uniform. The uh, Austrian army are great for that. Not too much fiddly bits, not too much piping or anything like the French. There's no lace on this figure. Sort of a beautiful simplicity. But you still have the uh, the unique leaf on the shako and the nice yellow pom pom cockade thing. Very nice. So I think the um, the shoulder straps are piped in blue as well. So yeah, we just put those on now. Might be better to do this later, but we'll see.
not the easiest to do from behind a camera. <laughs> Making a bit of a mess. So actually it's better that we did it now. We can tidy it up easier. Okay, no, not bad. So let's uh, let's move on. We'll paint the leaf that we just mentioned. Um, I can't decide if I want it more of a military green or more of a brighter green, like a foresty green. I think I'm going to go brighter. Actually, I'm going to go with. Vallejo black green Okay, so really it's just the metallics and the straps to undercoat next. Um, we're going to go with the straps first. I'm going to use Vallejo Sky Grey for that. Now this is the opposite to light mud. This is the colder white that we want. So it contrasts with the warm white of the cloth. Makes it look nice and clean as well, especially for a strap. Hi Matt, thanks for watching. Yeah, it's satisfying, isn't it, seeing the, the figure come to life. Especially from the the early stages when you're putting the, the base colours on. It can look a little bit sort of boring or messy at first. But then as you start highlighting, you see it come together and it's yeah, it's very enjoyable. It's probably why it's such a relaxing hobby for a lot of people.
So something you want to look out for on this particular pose is the gun strap. Um, you see just here, you can just see a bit of the strap visible from this side. So if you can, it's good to try and paint that in. It can be quite tricky though, you might get it on the face or on the wood. But, you know, as we said, it's still the uh, the earlier undercoating phase. There's nothing been highlighted yet, so... Easy to tidy things up at the moment. Yeah, so before I continue, I'm just going to use a bit of black to tidy up the shako there. So I'm going to do a bit of yellow before we finish with the metallics. I'm going to use Vallejo Gold Brown. This is a really nice solid undercoat for yellow. Goes on over black really well. Uh, yellows tend to have a reputation of not covering well. Um, but yeah, this is a lovely, lovely colour. And it goes over black really nicely. So we're going to do the the little pom pom underneath the leaf. Uh, I'm just going to blob that on solid, and then we'll give it a highlight, and then we'll put a black dot in the middle afterwards. That should be easier than trying to paint a, a neat circle to begin with. And we'll also do the little fastener. It's like two, two little downward lines that go to the but the gold button, uh, and we'll do the the little rosette cockade. We'll do that as well. All right. So now the metallics. We're going to go with. Uh, Vallejo Chainmail, this is a game air metallic, if you watched the live stream uh, last time, it was a, painted a Napoleonic French infantryman, I was uh, explaining why I like to use game air, um, because they flow quite a lot nicer than um, like a standard metallic, like just a normal one like this which can come out a bit thick sometimes and metallics tend not to dilute well with water um, but these game airs are yeah they're really nice they flow really well they don't clog up on the brush although sometimes you have to be a bit wary that they don't flow too well and go on to other colours um, but yeah they're nice Nice metallics. I'm just going to paint over the whole 
uh, of the metalwork on the gun. And then we'll give it a wash and a highlight. Uh, the buttons on this unit are silver, um, but we'll do those at the very end, after the cloth's been highlighted. Alright, cool. So I think we're ready to wash over the flesh now and and the backpack as well, that should be dry, so I'm gonna use Vallejo uh sorry not Vallejo, Games Workshop Agrax Earthshade. Got me my nice 3D printed hockey puck thing. Stop it spilling over. Yeah, and this is just a nice nice way to add some easy shading. It's great for things like hair and things with texture like like the backpack, any sort of fur, things like that. Try not to put it on too much, like too thick on the face, because it will darken the face quite a bit and obscure some of the detail if it goes on too heavy. Okay, so let's let's highlight the cloth. So we use Vallejo light mud for the base coat, and we're going to use Vallejo beige for the first highlight. It looks kind of kind of uh, yellowy, but it works fairly well over the top of this colour and then we're going to use ivory on top of that. If you want to keep like a more consistent tone within the colours, within the layers, um, I would say you can just lighten light mud with ivory. Um, sort of create a colour that's halfway between those two. But uh, as a sort of a easy triad, as it were, uh, beige works pretty well.
Yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to throw them in the chat. Or if you're watching this uh, when it's not live later on, leave a question in the comments and I'll see if I can answer it for you. So with the highlighting here, I'm just sort of just sort of painting over the cloth, um, leaving the base coat in the creases. Some of this uniform is a little flat in places where there's not many creases, and it's really up to you if you want to follow that 100%, or whether you want to uh, add your own creases here and there. I don't think there's any strict rule about the way you highlight something like that. Just uh, try and make it look natural really. But I've seen, um, I've seen plenty of other styles where people just like to put a lot of lines in and that can be quite nice, quite pleasing to the eye as well. Okay, I'm pretty happy with how that's looking so far. All right, next I'm going to highlight the uh, the wood. I'm going to use Vallejo beige brown. This is going on top of flat brown. And actually, uh, this will go on, on top of the, the backpack quite nicely as a mid-colour. So I'm going for the diagonal stripe effect on the wood. Sometimes I like to do sort of a vertical, vertical wood grain. Uh, yeah, but sometimes diagonal looks quite nice as well. It's personal preference. Gives it a nice woody texture I guess makes it look slightly less sort of smooth
yeah, just doing some lovely vertical lines to uh, to give the backpack some nice texture. Okay, not bad. Next thing, I'll highlight the grey with uh, Vallejo Neutral Grey. And that's going on top of Vallejo Dark Grey. So you see here where the cloth has got that nice big fold in the middle there. I don't like the way the, the highlight has just covered that up slightly. I want it to be a nice clean line all the way across. So I'm just going to use some of the undercoat to just uh, go across there and create that that line in between where it folds over on itself. There we go. All right, next I'm gonna highlight the blue and I'm gonna use another Scale 75, this time Cantabric Blue. Uh, this is going over Scale 75 Deep Blue. So this is meant to be a very dark blue, so I'm not sure if I'm going to give it another highlight or not yet. So I think the flesh is about dry now. So we're going to give the flesh a first highlight with flesh base. That's what we used as our base colour before we washed it with Games Workshop Agrax Earthshade. I'm 
start off with the hands so the back of the hand is going to be pretty much flat for the most part uh, the fingers will just be individually picked out with lines Looks like he's only got three fingers on this hand. Not sure if that's the sculpt or where one of the fingers is sort of blended in with the other one there. I think we can probably put a line in between those that one there to make it look like another finger. So with the face we're going to start with the nose just sort of do a downward line in the middle and we're going to go left to right with the nostrils paint the chin and the top lip and then we'll bring the top lip down each side uh, to sort of merge with the cheek at the bottom And then we'll do a line across the top above the eye. Nice to hear you got good weather in Canada, Bob. Alright, so let's try and sort this finger out. I'm going to use some flat brown just to put a line here. Try and create another finger there. All right. Let's give the black a quick highlight. I'm going to use scale 75 abyssal blue for this. So this is just a very dark grey with a hint of blue in it. And they say that blue can make black look more black
and this uh, particular colour tends to dry ever so slightly lighter than it goes on. So if you can't see it that well right now, you'll probably be able to see it better in a minute. Alright, so, let's see what's left. Let's highlight the scabbard quickly. We're going to use Vallejo leather belt. This is going on top of dark rust. Okay. And we're going to give the backpack a quick extra highlight with Vallejo Brown Sand. We used uh, Beige Brown before that on the backpack. So I'm going to pick out the edges here. in particular Maybe just a smidge in the middle here. Nice. Alright, so let's give the flesh another quick highlight. Now we used Vallejo Flesh Base and we washed it with Agrax and then we gave it a first highlight with Flesh Base and now we're going to highlight it again but this time with Flat Flesh so uh, Matt's just asked a good question when I, um, when I usually paint figures how many do I usually work on at a time? Uh, not normally not normally one at a time like this I mean this is quite a slow way of painting figures um, if you're doing a one-off figure like this, or a character figure maybe, this is probably the best way to do it. Um, but, uh, you know, when you're painting a unit, say a unit of 24, um, you might want to break it down uh, into smaller batches of, say, 6 or 12, uh, and then do it that way, and then you can sort of steamroll through each colour, by the time you finish a batch uh, with one colour, it will probably be ready to highlight anyway. Um, so what I'm doing here, actually, I did, sorry I didn't mention this, I'm going to mix a little bit of these two together, which is what I'm doing there. So when earlier on we put the paint on the back of the hand, 
we did it in sort of one big flat uh, space there. Now we're doing some extra lines on uh, leading up to the knuckles just to sort of uh, give some definition to where the tendons might be etc. Let's see if we can zoom in a bit on the face. So trying to pick out the cheekbones a bit there, a uh, little couple of little dots on the chin. If we can get the top lip without touching the bottom lip, that's good. And then if you can pick out the nostril on either side of a little dot. That's pretty good too. Okay, that's not too bad. So something else we can do with the face uh, is add a bit of a pinkish colour to the bottom lip. Um, that can give it a bit of character. So what we're going to do is we're going to use Games Workshop Tusk or Fur, which is a nice pinky sort of fleshy colour. Alright, so next we'll probably give a second highlight to the white cloth and I'm going to use Vallejo Ivory. Before we gave it a base coat with Vallejo Light Mud, mid colour of Vallejo Beige and then we're going to use Ivory on top of that. Always remember to water your paints down. If anything, that's the, the number one top tip for beginners. Thin your paint a little, don't put it on too thick. But don't put it on too thin either. It can be easily done.
Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Okay, so next we will give a second highlight to the grey. We used uh, Vallejo Dark Grey. Sorry, I just bumped the camera there. Uh, Vallejo Dark Grey for the base coat. And we used Neutral Grey for the first highlight. And now we're going to finish it off with Vallejo Light Grey. So Vallejo Light Grey is just a smidge darker than Sky Grey, which is what we use on the straps. Um, but you can use Light Grey on the straps as well. Just a few more colours to go now, whilst we finish this off. Uh, first of all, I'm going to highlight the white on the straps, and I'm going to use Vallejo Off-White. This is going over Sky Grey. So Off-White is just a, a tiny bit, tiny bit less white than a white white would be, hence the name Off-White. Um, but it's much more white than Ivory. Um, you should be able to see here actually, this is ivory and this is off-white. And the brush that I'm using to uh, water down my paints is actually just a nub. There's no bristles on this brush at all, but it holds a, a little droplet of water quite well.
Yeah, don't forget the canteen strap at the back here. And this little bit in between the wrist and the, the gun. So, now we're looking at the straps on the front here. Um, I think they look okay. Um, what we could do, if we wanted to, uh, to define it, is we can use like a, an ink or a, a very thin down grey that's darker than the straps just to sort of give um, some definition in between um, really it is preference I think we're going to leave it like this today um, but if we if we paint another Austrian in the future I might show you how defining the straps would look uh, with an ink or something like that um, but I think as is that looks pretty good uh, we will pick out the buttons actually before we do that I'm going to use Vallejo, uh, sorry, Scale 75 Black. So, any buckles or buttons, we're just going to give them a base coat. So that when we come to paint them, they'll show up nice. The little buckles on the the backpack here. So Bob says he's been painting Hundred Years War Army. That's very interesting. Uh, Love to see me paint something in that range in that period. That'd be quite cool, actually. Um, we have done a couple of Napoleonics now, so we might mix it up a little and do something different next time like that. That'd be quite cool. So I'm going to highlight the yellow. I'm going to use Vallejo Light Yellow. And since we've got some black squeezed out, I might as well do this now so we can dot on the little uh, pom-pom afterwards. We have a nice black dot in the middle there. Let's give the black another highlight in the meantime whilst the yellow's drying. I'm going to use grey graphene from Scale Colour. That's going on top of a bizzle blue. Again, these paints are extremely matte, very, very nice.
Okay, now we're going to do that black dot. Try and get it nice and central if we can. Not entirely with, happy with that, I might pop a little bit of yellow just on this part here. Yeah, that's a bit better. So the leaf on the hat, we're going to give that a quick highlight with Germ Camo Bright Green. Make it nice and vibrant. And now for the silver and the gold. So I'm going to highlight the silver with Game Air Silver. I think I said I was going to wash it actually, but I'm not going to have time for the, the wash to dry if I do that now. So I'm just going to highlight it. Uh, but yeah, you can use like a black wash, like Nuln Oil from Games Workshop. That's a good one. And since we've got some black out already, actually, we can define the the rings on the gun with a couple of flicks of this black. Oh, the buttons are silver, so let's put those on now. So where I've put the black on as a base coat, that should make this stand out on the white uniform. And if you make a mistake, you can just put a little bit more black, like I did here. There we go. Lovely. And I'm going to take the gold and do some buckles. This is a Games Workshop Retributor Armour. 
Nice solid gold colour this. Again, that black that we put on the the uh, straps at the back here, that makes the gold show up quite nicely. Alright, so I think that's just about it for this figure. We could put some black on the cockade here around the around the brass button just to give that a little more definition there. Very nice. Okay, so yeah, I think that'll do. So Thanks for watching everyone, if you streamed in live and if you're watching it on YouTube after the fact, thanks for watching and hope you learned something. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below, I'll be happy to answer those. Let me know what you'd like to see next time, maybe a different period or a different army. I'm sure we'll get around to lots of different live streams. If you'd like to commission us, you can send us an email at artmasterstudio at hotmail.co.uk. And uh, yeah, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers. See you later, guys.